Eating is a complicated business. What and how much we eat is driven by body and brain, social and psychological pressures, wealth and poverty, physical fitness and age, and countless direct and indirect cues to eat. Eat and eat some more. The result is a global obesity epidemic. Can science help solve our dietary problems? In Salzburg, Jens Blechert studies a range of eating disorders. He's trying to understand why we eat when we're not hungry, like when we're stressed. We try to understand this phenomena from different perspectives. Uh, one is to, to track people in daily life, uh, understand when they crave, what they crave. We do this by using a smartphone app where we repeatedly ask participants to report their cravings. We also investigate those cravings from a neurocognitive perspective, um, understand what the brain does when such cravings occur. Um, we bring people into the lab, uh, record their um, neural activity uh, while they look at images of tasty foods or while they eat tasty foods and try to understand uh, what the brain does to stop eating or to regulate eating. If we find out how these relationships work, we can, in the next step, then make predictions. We can tell people well, when they should not uh, go shopping, for example. In Pamplona, Miguel Martinez Gonzalez is looking for new health clues in the traditional Mediterranean diet. Rich in olive oil and nuts, fruits and vegetables, fish and whole grains. He wants to know if this diet reduces cardiovascular disease. Well, all doctors recommend overweight or obese patients to lose weight. However, no randomized trial has ever demonstrated reductions in the risk of hard clinical events of cardiovascular disease with intentional weight loss. The PREDIMED PLUS trial, therefore, will be the first trial to test this important medical intervention among non-diabetic subjects. In Amsterdam, Rikold Houtkulpe is studying worms. He wants to know whether restricting fats, protein and carbohydrates in the diet can make them, and perhaps people, live longer and healthier. What we try to understand is how the genetics of a certain individual and the diet that they are eating contribute to the aging process. We all know these examples in our environment where, where people that, that eat a lot uh, and still stay slim uh, or the other way around where people, uh, despite eating a healthy diet, gain a lot of weight. 